Game Ranks presents 10 nasty ways video game cheaters were punished. We all hate cheaters, we deal with them every day, so here are 10 of the best examples of cheaters getting a taste of their own medicine. At number 10 we have a notorious case in Guild Wars 2. A player character was teleporting and running around and killing random players at an obnoxious rate and slaughtering people by the hundreds. Even if you killed him, he'd reappear 10 seconds later. This is a cheater to the maximum degree. So one of the heads of security in Guild Wars 2 managed to take control of this player, stripped him of all of his items and clothing, and walked him to the highest point in one of the game's hubs. and then proceeded to jump off and plummet to his death. And he recorded the whole thing while everybody watched. After that, of course, he was permanently banned forever and all of his characters were deleted. That is just some sweet, sweet justice. At number 9, we have Rockstar dealing with Grand Theft Auto cheaters in the only way they know how, by being obnoxious and blowing shit up. Grand Theft Auto Online players found an exploit where they were able to bring in really awesome single player cars into multiplayer, giving them a really unfair advantage. So Rockstar found out and made it so that anytime anyone went into one of these cars, it automatically exploded and killed them and destroyed their car permanently. There was no way to escape this explosion. You were dead. Let's just say there were a lot of random exploding cars in GTA Online for a while. At number 8, we have a really cool community security system in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or CSGO. Valve came up with a program called Overwatch that gives certain players special ability to oversee matches that were flagged as seemingly unfair. They then have the power to watch replays of the matches and make their own decision on whether or not to ban certain players. It's a lot of power, but so far the system seemed to have been working. It's very cool and definitely trial by fire at its most effective. At number 7, we have gamers actually getting slammed with criminal charges just for cheating in an online game. The Japanese company Nexon, famous for its game Sun and Attack, have been slamming gamers using in-game cheats and hacks with actual legal action. The first people to get charged by this company were 17-year-old college students. Do you guys think this is too harsh or just appropriate? At number 6, we have back when Gears of War 2 launched, players were actually hacking the game to automatically unlock all the game's achievements. Microsoft was able to find and hunt down these people and reset their gamer score completely. That is just slash and burn and really harsh. But kind of appropriate, you know, if you're gonna cheat to boost your score, your score doesn't matter too much to you. So maybe you should start from zero, you punks. At number 5, Titanfall definitely made some waves when it first released thanks to its cheater policy. Their cheater policy was absolutely awesome. If you cheat or hack in the game, you can still play, but you're placed in special matches where you can only play with other cheaters. It's almost like a little bit of a no man's land or getting outcast from the city. So if you cheat in Titanfall, you're destined to be stuck with your own kind, whether you like it or not. At number 4, we have some words to the wise. If you're a professional gamer, don't get caught cheating because you will get screwed. Riot actually fanned League of Legends cheaters $30,000. Riot Games really takes cheating seriously, especially when it's on a national scale, and especially in the case of the Korean team Abzu Forest. This $30,000 they were fined was actually 20% of the team's current tournament winnings. The bright side, as harsh as that is, is that Riot Games has a Korea charity, and they donated all of it to that. So be a good team player and a good sportsman, and this stuff won't happen to you. I would cry if I lost that much money. At number 3, players that play Red Dead Redemption Online that were bullies are actually marked as player killers in the game. Players that were bullied were actually given the opportunity and the chance to make a comeback by being able to teleport anywhere in the world instantly. And the actual bullies themselves had a really hard time because not only were they marked a player killer, but they were also wanted by the in-game law enforcement constantly. So if you mess with people in Red Dead Redemption, you're gonna have a bad time. At number 2, do not cheat in Monster Hunter 3, or you'll get banned for 7,000 years. Capcom's message to cheater that displays during the game says, Because you used modified data to connect online, you're now banned. The ban will be lifted December 12th, 9,999. In the future, if you violate the terms of service, it'll be possible that you're banned for good. Yes, yeah, so 7,000 years is apparently only the first strike. If you screw up again, then you'll be banned forever. Don't screw up, Monster Hunter players. At number 1, we have cheaters in the newest open world survival game, H1Z1. Cheaters in this game are of course permanently banned, but can actually gain access back into the game by making a public apology. Yes, by completely embarrassing themselves, by making a full YouTube video with a sincere apology, and sending it to one of the heads of Sony Online. That's the only way you can get back in this game. So you make an ass of yourself by cheating and then you make even more of an ass of yourself by publicly apologizing like a goofball. If you really want to play the game that bad and that's what you want to do to get unbanned, maybe you shouldn't have cheated in the first place. So those were 10 harsh punishments for video game cheaters. Have you ever been a victim to one of these? Let us know. Let us know which treatments you think should be adopted by a bunch of games. Are some of these too harsh and crazy or are they just right? And of course, if you had a good time, definitely like this video because it really helps us out. You know the drill. Subscribing is good too if you're new. You can also follow me and yell at me about video games on Twitter at Jake Baldino. But thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.